right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudir, local realtor here in Ottawa with Sutton Ottawa. And today we are joined by Sarah Boyd from Sarah Boyd Nutrition and Fitness. Fitness and Nutrition. Fit- I stay corrected. <laughs> Perfect. So Sarah, as far as putting a program together, what are like the, the shortest you've seen as far as like somebody getting? And I know, I know I'm asking this question because we just talked about like the fast dopamine hit and yeah. there. But like what are the shortest that you've seen as far as someone really progressing in the program tough question to answer because it's not about the quick fix Mm. but um you know there's people who so i offer a uh, just an assessment so when i look at my clients i have a i'll just do the assessments for you and give you what you should be doing in the styles or i'll do it with a month of coaching and so there are people that come that are already very disciplined but they just don't know with all the information about diets up there they don't know what type of how eating they should do or, you know, they've been doing sprint distance triathlons and now they're switching to Ironman distance and they need to know how to fuel themselves properly and train appropriately amongst the other training activities that they're doing. So if people are coming and they're they're disciplined, it can those changes can happen fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. It's just the majority of the population isn't like that. Those athletes or those people coming to me are very few and far between at this point in time. Um, so not really a direct answer yeah. to that one, but no, it really depends okay. on the person. Well, I, I guess the whole idea of this question was to prove to people that it's not about the quick fix. It's just yeah. not going to happen. If yeah. you're looking for that quick fix, it's really not nutrition and, and doing the fitness is not really the, the way to do it. You know, you're not going to get that fast dopamine hit. Quickly from it. it. No, no. But you're building a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You're building a, a, an appropriate sort of uh, trajectory for your life to you know, yeah. be able to get up and come down yep. when you're 80 years old, have a proper meal, and, and, and you know, not necessarily always having to worry about your heart attack and things like that because of you know, yeah. just living healthy. Exactly. And I think the one big thing, because people are looking to have that dopamine rush, that we do need to feel good. We're coming out of a very uh, lonely time with the pandemic. Yeah. And so part of what I'm working on now and one of my goals for 2024 is to build up the social wellness scene. And so that's the idea that we're getting out, we're socializing, but we're meeting new people and we're doing it. Uh, we're building up a network of people who are like minded and also interested in the same aspect of wellness that mm-hmm. we are. And that's where you can get that dopamine rush. You might not, you might hate going to the gym every day, or you might hate going and working out, but you love the people that you work out with. And that's going to give you the dopamine rush. And our social connection is actually one of our main six pillars of our health. And it's one that with the digital age as well, where we're on the phone, there is some connection we get, especially your loved ones living far away. But we spend a lot of time on our phones interacting with technology instead of interacting with other people. Where if we think back to our grandparents, they didn't just interact with their family. They had friends. And they got involved with their community, right? And we're getting a lot of that dopamine hits, especially like with validation, with, you know, constant messaging, things mm-hmm. like that, that are not necessarily helping yeah. uh, per se, because all they're doing is just giving you that validation, that sort of quick do- dopamine hit, but they're not giving you that social, proper social interaction, mm-hmm. or I should say the, you know, the, what you actually deserve sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, I find that quite often, can be the killer of a relationship. Like when, when someone is like just, you know what I mean? Like they're just looking for that quick dopamine hit and they're looking yeah. for that validation. And then the other person is not necessarily giving it to them, but they're seeking it elsewhere and so on and so yeah, forth. Yeah, and it's, you know, when I work with clients, say, you know, a woman in her 30s who's postmenopausal and needs, to, not postmenopausal, postpartum, sorry, doing a lot of postmenopausal work right now, um, who's postpartum and had a baby, she needs to change the way she's eating. She needs to, you know, change the way she's exercising, but it doesn't mean her partner has to. And that can be frustrating amongst uh, couples because, mm-hmm. you know, she wants to change and he doesn't. And he's, maybe he doesn't need to, maybe he does, but either way, he doesn't want to. And that's where that social connection can come in. Finding a community of people who are working towards what you're doing. Um, you know, my partner and I, were, we're very happy. We enjoy doing very different things. You know, our exercise choices are different. He plays sports. He doesn't like going to the gym. Yeah. I enjoy going to the gym. I also enjoy sports, but I always injure myself, so... The gym is kind of where my happy place is with that. And I think you have to be okay having those separate circles with it yeah. and being okay with that. No, for sure. I, I'm, and that's the other thing too, like with this whole social aspect of it. And I, I wanted to, we can, we're kind of chatting a little bit off camera. I wanted to kind of bring mm-hmm. it up and see your thoughts on it. Like what are you doing as far as maybe including that into your program or? Yeah, it's offering more events and it, it's primarily geared around women for sure because that's where I work prim- I work with a lot of women more than I work with men and 
coming out, women are by nature a little bit more social than men are, not all the time, mm -hmm. but I think in general we are, and also tend to be the ones in the families that are taking a lead on a lot of the household stuff. And so this is might be, you know, rub a lot of people the wrong way, but I think in some ways the feminist movement kind of killed it for women. Not killed everything, but you know, we said go out and you can have a high powered career and you can, you know, do anything you want to do, which is phenomenal. And I agree with a lot of that. But you can't also be the one who's expected to do everything at home. You know, there needs to be a give and a take there. And it, it comes down to choices. A lot of families are choosing to live lifestyles where we need to have two incomes. Yeah. And those are choices that you're making. And it doesn't mean that the woman needs to come home and plan all the meals and cook all the meals. And I even see now where families are saying, well, my 13 year old needs to focus on school and then they have sports, so they can't do anything. 14 years old, I had a night a week, I had to cook dinner for my family, you know? And I, it's tough because to have these conversations sometimes because I don't have kids 14, and you can. I was can. Doing two jobs. Yeah, but it's, it's like, also, as parents, it's your job to raise yeah. kids who can take care of themselves and cooking I do want to touch skill. on that though, the, the whole feminine sort of masculine thing. Yeah. I, I find a lot of the times, like especially in a relationship, right? Like if the only way for, at least in my opinion, you know, I might be canceled after this, but <laughs> With that being said, I find a lot of the times like the, the only way for a relationship to work is that female being in their feminine and then the male being in their masculine. Okay. And in order for you to do feel that way as a, as a female, like you need to be treated like somewhat of a queen in a way that, you know, you've been taken care of. You've been kind of the, the hard stuff that requires a lot more stressors mm -hmm. is for the men to do it. And for the women to kind of just, you know, do the, the feminine stuff, like the, just being there and then being supportive, being loving, being all of that. I'm not saying that you, you can't do both. But if you're in your masculine a lot more than you are in your feminine, you're going to find that your body starts to kind of tell you certain things that it's not happy with. It. Yeah, it's not really working. It's, it's not ideal for you. Yeah. And the same kind of goes for men. If you're in your feminine more than you are in your masculine, you're going to start feeling emasculating and you're going to start feeling depressed and you're going to start feeling like you don't belong. Mm -hmm. And and this is something that I find like with a lot of the movements out there, it just kind of like it, it hasn't been put on the back burner. Nobody's like really paying attention to it. Yeah. But it's coming about a little bit more now, I, I think, think so. it is. And it, the once again, the hard thing is it looks different for everyone. Mm -hmm. What like what my feminine might be is very different for for one of my girlfriends, you know? And so that's hard too, is where we need kind of that education around it. Yeah. In my I'm not saying like, for example, I don't mean to cut you off, but I'm not saying like, you know, you can't, for example, take the car to the garage. You can't, you know, maybe change the tires on your own. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But what I'm saying is the more you're doing that, the less feminine you feel and, and the less you're in your feminine energy. Yeah. And it becomes more like you put this sort of like a, a block when mm -hmm. you're in a relationship where like you have to be feminine that, or a little bit more masculine in that yeah. relationship. And it's just I actually have a perfect example story to tell that it emphasizes that yeah. so people know we're not being, you know, sexist here with it. Uh, a couple years ago, it was pouring rain. I was pulling out of the gym, had my dog with me in the car, and I had a flat tire. Oh, my gosh. Call my boyfriend, tell him I had a flat tire. And he's like, well, do you need me to come change it? You know, you're 30 minutes away. I know how to change a tire. My dad made sure I wasn't allowed to take the vehicles until I could change my own tire. It's like, no, no, I got this. I can change my tire. So I uh, started changing my own tire, put the donut on, and I'm getting texts every couple of minutes. You okay? Do you got it? Are you sure? And it was getting annoying to the point where I'm getting these tech mess text messages because I can change my own tires. Just because you change my tires seasonally doesn't mean I can't. That's just a blue job in our household. And then it kind of clicked. It's that masculine. It's that, you know, his girlfriend had car trouble. This is typically more of a masculine thing. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, well, do you want me to come and follow you to the garage so you get there safe? I was like, yes, I I'd appreciate that. So as much as I changed my own tires, I then stayed in my car, waited for him to get there so he could also feel good about the fact of knowing that I got to the garage safely. 100%. You know, and it's that masculine 100%. And feeling. then the, the, one of the things that I've noticed as well, too, about a relationship, like men trade, you know, being crazy and out there and like we've got multiple girlfriends for two things, loyalty. Mm -hmm. And the only reason a man would give loyalty and respect, in my opinion, is and what comes with it is taking care of you. Yeah, it exactly. only comes if you. So yeah. that's that's kind of where I'm coming at. With yeah, this. really appreciate a little bit sort of uh, side track, but let's go back to fitness. Yeah. So fitness can't really work properly unless you've got. It's not just the nutrition. When we look at the deep pillars of our health, like our pillars of our deep health, there's mm -hmm. six components. And anytime you look at you know holistic lifestyle coaching or anything, you can't. You can't ignore one in order to have, you know, one better to get your goal. You have to address them all. And so physical components we think of are our exercise, our nutrition, our sleep. 
Our mental health is another one. Our social connection is the fifth. And the last one is nature. So our ability to, you know, get out with nature. And if you look at Japanese culture, they have Tokyo, massive cities, but they prioritize parks and their yep. trees. And they prioritize this because they know the benefit that nature has on them. And so, you know, back when I started with personal training, I would take the weekends off and I'd go to the cottage. And it annoyed some clients because they had to miss their session during the week and they wanted to make it up when they were free. And I set a boundary that I wasn't available. And that was more because I wanted to go to the cottage and I wanted to have fun. It was summer. And then one day one of those clients came to me and he's like, I got your book. I was at Chapters flipping through books. And now I finally realized why you go to the cottage. And it was a book about the uh, Japanese culture of... Um, forest bathing and I read through this is like this is it. oh my gosh this is why I go to the cottage this is the benefit that I get yeah. it allows me to give all of my time and my energy Monday to Friday to my clients is because I get to go and I get to recharge on the weekends 100% and that's the thing like you cannot fill somebody else's cup if your cup is full exactly empty, right? yeah your cup has to be somewhat full to be able to say let me share it with you yeah so when I assess my clients like yes I work primarily in the fitness and nutrition space but we also talk about sleep. We also talk about mental health. We talk about the social connection. That social connection is one that I'm getting more into um, with hosting the events that I mentioned earlier. And then the nature aspect is something that I just, you know, go for a walk. Posted something on Instagram yesterday. Stressed out? Go for a walk. Angry? Go for a walk. Get out and it's not just going for a walk, but go take your shoes off, you know, walk barefoot through nature. Do things that are gonna integrate you into that because it has an impact on our health. Yeah. And it, it it's not just like it's not just us i mean like my dog is the same kind of way like I'll, I'll give you an example we my girlfriend came by about maybe three weeks ago and i was feeling some kind of way like i've had some sort of stressor during the day and i was feeling some kind of way and the dog could feel it as well too my dog hasn't gone for for a walk that day yeah she walks in the door and like she's expecting i'm gonna be all you know lovey-dovey and i just said look the couch is there relax have something i need to go for a walk mm -hmm. i took a 45 minute walk and i came back perfect day yeah the dog was happy I was happy everybody's centered everybody's yeah. back to normal and that's the thing like you do have to kind of follow those mm -hmm. pillars if you don't follow those pillars it's like basically trying to you know drive a car when the oil is missing yeah or driving exactly. a car and then that. one of the tires is kind of blown out like mm -hmm. you're just not gonna make it there yeah you do have to have perfect conditions for driving mm -hmm. perfect conditions for living Yep. Same way. Yep. Why do we take more care of our car and we can't take care of our bodies? That's what boggles my mind. That's a really great question. And it's an example I use when I talk to male clients for the most part because cars are their thing is, you know, you're not going to buy a premium vehicle and put the worst gas in it, mm -hmm. right? You're going to put the best fuel in it. But this is your vehicle that you have to take you through your entire life. Body, and mind, time. Exactly. That's a really good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Body, mind, time. Those are the only assets that you have. Yep. You know, if your body is given out, that's the vehicle. Yep. You just said it's a vehicle. If the body's given up, well, how are you going to continue the journey? Mm -hmm. If your mind is not there, how reliable are you going to be to people? How reliable are you going to be for yourself? Yep. You're going to start looping around. If if you're allowing people to put shit in your mind, yep. how are you going to be able to kind of get out there? And well, the same thing with time. what you consume, right? Exactly. Yeah. And the same thing with time is like when someone, and, and this is probably, I'm probably the worst at it, like very, very bad at like letting people know that my time is worth something. I, I'm always yeah. like, the second I feel like someone is abusing my time right away, I'm like, I'm sorry, man, I gotta get going. Like, That's something I me, have to learn. So yeah. we can, I'll take some notes for you on that one later. To me, those are the only three assets that you have. And if I'm making a decision and the decision revolves around, it has to revolve around yeah. those three somehow. And if it's not taking those three into consideration, I gotta reconsider, mm -hmm. I gotta come back. I'll give you a very simple example. If something someone is doing is bothering me, the chances are it's, on my mind okay so it's taking a little bit of real estate up here mm -hmm. i want to make sure that you know what i'm, I'm sorry i'm not okay with that yeah. it's not going to happen or we're we're, we're not going to talk about this okay because i don't want that real estate taken away from me yeah and the same thing goes for body like if someone is offering me something and i know it's bad well no sorry it's going to affect my body in a, in a certain way biggest one for us in our culture the shisha okay Their gila. i don't know if you know what that is yep. but you know a lot of my friends are like pushing it and i go no man if I do this, I can't work out for like a, a week. You just don't feel good. I don't feel good. I feel like yeah. shit the next day. Yeah. So I'm not going to do it. It's going to affect my body and definitely it's going to affect my mind because I know I'm ADHD galore. Yeah. If I don't work out, then this is what's going to happen. Yeah. So about ADHD, and we were just chatting off of, off of camera earlier about yeah. this. Tell me a little bit more about how you feel about ADHD and working out. What does that mean to you? I mean, I think with anything, ADHD, and I 
by no means is this one of my specialties. It just seems to be something that's popping up a lot these days. Exercise helps pr- helps release endorphins. It helps our, as much as it takes, you know, your cortisol level will increase. It also helps calm you down afterwards. Mm-hmm. 10 minutes of exercise is all you need to, re- to release endorphins that are going to make you feel good and help you relax later on. A lot of ADHD, you know, spoke with a family doctor about this uh, a couple weeks ago. So many people come and they're like, oh, I, ne- I need medication for ADHD. And uh, he's like, well, have you gone for a walk? How many screens do you have on at once? You have your work phone on your phone. Are you watching TV and have your computer on at the same time? Maybe we just need to shut the screens off and yeah. we need to allow ourselves to focus on one thing. And the focus is really hard. Exercising can help to improve that focus later on. One, it gives us something tangible to focus on. And it's tough. I know I have clients that come in and say, oh, the whole workout, I was thinking about this other thing. It's a practice like everything else. It's not going to be perfect at once. But exercise can help us focus better later on. Mm -hmm. And that could be something to focus on. You know, it's the difference between, it's not meditation, it's mindfulness. Mindfulness is really difficult for people to be present in the moment these days. And I was chatting with a girlfriend last night and she's like, you know, this new person I'm seeing, they're really good at being present, you know? He told me he couldn't message me the other day because he was hanging out with his friend. And how rare is that? You sit on the couch at night having a conversation with your significant other and you're, you know, you're messaging someone else. You're not present in that moment. It's uh, it's very rare for you to message me during the day or if I'm in meetings and I don't have do not disturb on. Yeah. And I work for a living like I I need people to call me. Right. Yeah. The reason being is because so I have this thing where I'm like I got another Japanese concept, but I kind of adopted a little bit. It's 25 five. Okay. 25 minutes of focus, five minutes of relaxing, okay. or five minutes of sort of getting off task. So if I'm working on something, let's say I'm trying to get a pricing in, in place or trying to put an offer together, whatever the case may be, I allow myself 25 uninterrupted, no phone, no screen, nothing else but the task that I'm doing. Okay. And then I go to the five minute of, okay, Check I can go words. get a coffee. So how do you do that? Do you use a timer on your phone? Do you use an app? Timer. Okay. Timer. Most of the time, it, I work through timers quite often, okay. and it's always on my phone and just... Click it, click it on. Or on my watch, I click it. Everything else is on. Do not disturb okay. while I'm doing this. Cool. Uh, because of ADHD, because of the fact that I, you know, I, again, I can't concentrate if I keep yeah. going left, right, and center. And then sometimes I'm, I might end up working on 50 tasks. If I don't do that, I'm working on 50 different tasks during the day and I get nothing done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, being able to focus that extreme yeah. focus onto one task. It takes how long? It takes five, 15 minutes to refocus on a task every mm-hmm. time you get off task. Exactly. If you're trying to work on five things at a time and going back and forth. You're never going to gain that time back. And I really appreciate what your friend said about like the fact that the person was present, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think that's tough now when, you know, especially in today's dating world, it's very difficult because there's, you know, the instant gratification. I can swipe and someone will swipe me back and I can start having those instant conversations. So when someone puts their phone down and gives you their genuine interest for a couple of hours, like that feels really good too, right? That that's that dopamine release we're looking for in our brain. And it's also, uh, for me, it's like one of them, going back to that whole BMT, it's one of my biggest pit peeves if I'm sitting down with somebody, giving them my time, and they're checking out their phone every five minutes. Mm -hmm. I will actually get up and leave. I've done it so many times where I would like, hey, it looks like you're busy. I'm just, yeah, I'll see myself out. Yeah. And they, a lot of the times they're like, what what just happened? And then they realize, oh, yeah, I was on the phone. I've done that with dates where I'd walk into the date, I'm sitting down, we start chatting. Uh, and I make it as a joke and I say, like, look, let's see how long we can talk without touching our phones. Yeah. And the second one of us does, you're buying the drinks. Okay. Okay. So it works. Yeah. It works because you have to. If you're not, like, if one person is carving out a certain amount of time of their life, which they're not getting back, they're giving it to you. Yep. That's the highest form of respect. Mm-hmm. For sure. You know what I mean? And that's what I aim to give to my clients too. And so I have had a really hard time switching from having paper programs where I'm writing down stuff to digital programs because then I'm, I'm on my computer and I'm on yeah. my phone. And I primarily in person work with an older demogra- age demographic where technology is not their favorite. Even mm-hmm. asking them to leave a Google review is, is tough because, you know, they don't know how. Yeah. And so that's been a difficult switch for me is the – you know, I want to just write your numbers down, but it looks like I'm on my phone. And do you think I'm on my phone? And so that's been getting better at it now, you know, look at the entire program, remember what they did and in between clients, put that in there. But it was really resistant to putting all of that stuff in my Google Sheets because I don't want it to come off like I'm not paying attention and I'm checking my texts or my emails. It's crazy. The other day I'm checking something out. My my son said, oh, I'm doing something on this day and I'm putting it in the calendar. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting beside me 
And I went through four different apps before I got to the calendar to put it in. That's what I mean by like yeah. you know, you're distracted. Like if we are, live in that sort of instant gratification, yep. dopamine hit, and one of those where oh somebody sent me a reel. Uh, so, no, I'm, I'm gonna check it later. Oh, uh, there's a text message that came. Oh, uh, maybe I'll check it. Yeah. So by the time I got to it, it was like three minutes later, and he goes, "That's why you forget a lot of the times." Yeah. And I said, yeah. "I'm glad that you're getting that at 15. You're actually recognizing that that's an issue, and you yeah. should be doing it." That is really so I good. noticed, too, he's been doing the same thing because he has the same sort of issue, right, with the whole ADHD. He actually has his phone on Do Not Disturb the whole time. Okay. The whole time. He's only going to call you back if he feels like calling you back, which is fantastic because it kind of gives him that sort of autonomy, that sense of, like, being able to kind of take his day as it, as it comes. Setting boundaries. Yeah. 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 And this is the biggest thing that we find a lot of times, like, with nutrition and fitness is that people are not setting enough boundaries what you said earlier kind of clicked when you said people will never like it's hard for somebody to miss an appointment with somebody else, mm -hmm. but they're so easy at missing an appointment with themselves. You got to start with your own boundaries. If you're setting your own boundaries on yourself, yeah. you're putting something in, in place. This is where discipline comes in mm -hmm. versus motivation It's like you got to put the boundary to say, I made an appointment with myself to go to the gym. I couldn't care less. I'm going to the gym. Yeah. If everything else goes to shit today, I'm going to the gym. And there's different boundaries too. There's the boundaries that I set with other people. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes first. If you can't set boundaries with other people, you can't set boundaries with yourself. Yeah. You know, so it's like you have two layers there. And if someone makes it through all of those, you're really doing poorly there. You got to set those boundaries and, yeah. you know, not let people knock them down. And sometimes though, like the boundaries that you're setting with other people, they're also boundaries with yourselves in a way. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if you don't accept a certain behavior in a relationship, or a certain behavior in a friendship. Mm -hmm. That's a boundary that you have for yourself. Yep. But you're also setting up with people as well too and saying like, this is a boundary that I have, but you have to kind of outline and yep. say, this is a boundary that I have and I can't cross it. Mm -hmm. If they cross it, well then they're crossing, crossing yours. If you're allowing them to cross it, that means you're also crossing your boundary. As for well sure, yeah. I feel like we could talk for hours I on this. I think we could, I definitely think we could, yeah, yeah, for sure. Really appreciate the, you know, the whole, holistic view that you bring to the table and like the, the the way that your business is set up and i really would want to kind of put this out there for all the folks out there that are watching you have to take care of yourself it's very very important to kind of put yourself first because if you're second the, the chances are you're going to keep going third and fourth and like sometimes you forget about yourselves yep uh sure. so most important thing is like again focus on you focus on health focus on being present and be able to do that you have to kind of put things in perspective and one of the mm -hmm. things that sarah will do is to help you with putting a program together Yep. Uh, putting it all in perspective, showing you what you're all about and, and really kind of taking a look at the whole holistic sort of six pillars that you've talked about with the social yeah. and then the mental and all of that and really kind of getting it working for you. Um, with that being said, Sarah, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks and for I, having me. And I you. hope we can uh, connect you with a lot more clients and get you kind of uh, out there in the, in the city. What uh, what part of the city do you primarily work in? I work in Kanata Lakes, actually. So it's a gym called Positive Movement Fitness, mm -hmm. where I do all of my PT clients. And then uh, the rest of it I'll do virtually. And it's, on the phone. it's a walk distance from my place for those who don't know. but. Uh, you haven't been in to say hi yet? I will. Okay, you'll have to come it's in. It's literally just around the corner. It used to be a quickie. Yeah, it used to be a quickie. Yeah. That yeah. was my quickie. I used, used to go and get you know the little snacks on a Saturday. That's the 90-10 we're talking Mine about. Mine was right more there. like daytime. If I were to skip school, I'd go over to the quickie or the Euro Deli. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's a gym, a little bit more of a positive influence. Exactly. Right? But yeah. this was, again, like, you know, you're picking up a snack for Saturday with the kids yeah. watching a movie or something yeah. like that. prime location. Very, very yeah. prime yeah. location. Really appreciate you coming on the show and uh, really appreciate the, the positive feedback that you bring and then all of the information that you bring for folks out there that are watching. And for folks that are watching, really appreciate you tuning in, listening into the, this channel. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit the like button so we can make more and more videos like that. And uh, don't forget to subscribe as well and hit that little bit bell icon. That way, any sort of episodes that come out with the great people around the city, you can be alerted to and you can watch it right away when it comes in. Thanks again. Have a great day.